Okay, once again, this is the second part of coding in the classic GT. Uh, this would be uh, the second part, which is related to uh, open to selective coding. We have uh, the earlier videos has been discussing about open coding, and we will proceed to selective coding. Take note that we will move to selective coding once we've decided some potential core categories derived from the open coding. So we know that after open coding, um, uh, the open coding will be done after we have identified the core category. At this point, we will start now with selective coding. So what is uh, selective coding as indicated here? So delimiting for selective coding. So after decided uh, to have the poten uh, one potential core variable or core category that would um, somehow, um, uh, the, uh, the, the one category that will, uh, that, that uh, comprises the majority of the variation of your categories, that's it. So we will now start with the selective coding. So there are two levels of delimiting in selective coding. Number one, as the theory integrates, it solidifies with fewer modifications needed as the researcher compares the next incident of a category to its properties. So that's the normal. So that means uh, once you have, uh, you have uh, different categories and once you have another one, uh, another uh, incidence will be uh, will another incidence can be integrated into your existing categories. So that means that's one delimiting or combining those categories. Um, second one is reduces the original list of categories for coding, which allows for a delimiting of the original list of categories for subsequent collecting and selective coding of additional data, according to the newly established boundaries of theorism. On the first part, uh, the theory integrates. So once you have integrated some of the um, incidents or codes based on your core category, you will now combine some of the codes or um, somehow uh, one category will cover some of the incidents. So some of the categories must be eliminated or will be part only of an indicator of a certain category. Uh, that's the solidifies with fewer modification needed as the researcher compares the new next incidence of a category to its properties. The second one is allows for delimiting of original list of categories for subsequent collecting, collection and selective coding of additional data. So this one now is that um, it's because we have now the core categories. Uh, so that, that somehow would help you limit the number of categories uh, to be included based on the core variable that you have identified. <clears throat> So the second question, so the target for selective coding is that um, uh, we can now reach, uh, we can now um, uh, determine whether our indicators of a particular concept that we've derived from data is, is, is considered complete or um, you have saturated or there are no other incident might be that will come in the future or your anticipation is that it can describe already the theory. It will always support the concept that you have identified. Now, so when can we say that we have, we must be, uh, that we have um, satisfied or completed the data collection? We call this one as theoretical saturation, which determines when to stop collecting data. So somehow you have some indicator that you, that, the data collection is already enough. So here the constant comparison of interchangeable indicators in the data yields the properties and dimension of each category or concept. This process of constant comparison continues until new, new, no new properties or dimension are emerging. Uh, memo writing is a continual process that helps to raise the data on a conceptual level and develop the properties of each category. So that means if 
uh, you have raised a particular level of your concept and you think that uh, you've already developed the appropriate properties and dimension of your categories, you might be reaching that um, theoretical saturation. Um, one indicator is that once you've interviewed up to three participants, uh, for example, and yet no new concepts has, uh, will emerge from the new interviews, or even if your theoretical sampling has already been uh, saturated, or that means um, uh, you you cannot find any other interesting trends on the incoming for the new data collection as guided by your theoretical sampling. You might have um, reached the theoretical saturation. So the difficulty as a researcher here is to prove that you have reached the theoretical saturation uh, in some point because sometimes um, after three interviews, no particular uh, well, no new concepts have emerged from your data, but somehow you have you you need also to evaluate each of the category whether this satisfies the complete definition of that concepts that you have want to integrate in your theory. Another important concept that you need to consider when you uh, are studying grounded theory is memoing. Uh, this is the writing of theoretical memos in the core stage in the process of generating grounded theory. If the researcher skips the stage by going directly to sorting or writing after coding, she is not doing grounded theory. That's according to Glaser. So the memo, if um, my own experience of memoing is that I will always take note of the relationship or possible. Uh, theoretical sampling that will guide me uh, in continuing my research. Memos are just simple notes about what you've learned for each interview or for the concepts that you have analyzed. Uh, this will somehow guide you of the potential relationship of various categories that might be that might emerge from your data. Memos are theoretical notes about the data and the conceptual connectedness between categories. At this, uh, every time you have a conjecture, if you have assumption or just an hypothesis, or in our term hypothesis, you just write it in the memos. This will remind you later in your memo sorting what are the relationship of categories that can be uh, the, the potential relationship of various categories. And if that memos actually define the relationship between two categories, or if you can find it frequently in most of your memos, then you can define the relationship of various categories. But somehow memoing can include other um, concepts or other um, things do you think uh, you believe is important in the formulation of your theory. So these are sometimes considered as notes in relation to the generation of the theory. And most of the time, we will think of our theory based on memos, based on how the how you progress from a simple concepts to complicated concepts and how they are connected. For instance, if you are just uh, if you are interviewing in your first participants, most probably your memos are at low levels because you have memos in every interview. So. For example, your memos in your first participant might appear as just notes of important concepts that a potential concept that you may derive from their first interview. And this memos will remind you of the emerging concepts that you can find, but maybe relationship will not be very important in your first interview. But after you have the fifth interview, you might um, establish some relationship of various categories of concept that will be used later for, for in support of your various um, of categories of your of your um, uh, the, uh, of your concepts or or important um, important connection between different categories. So an example of a memo is thus. This one, um, there is a code A24003 Memo 3, the passion of vocation. Networks are keeping personal and professional passions from being eroded, depleted in the hectic hundrum of daily organizational operations. Our job is our work. Our practice is our passion, distinguishing between practice and work, between vocation and job. So, this is an important memo of differentiating various concepts and the presence also of that concept. Another is uh, almost similar memo, memo six, 
really start to learn when they find a passion for a subject and then make a real connection to other learners, real-time practitioners. So individual passion for learning is stimulated and reinforced in community. So that means um, the last, um, there is a quote here. This me that means this is somehow a basis of uh, the author's field notes about what happens. And the last one would be distinguishing concept between, and uh, the last statement is actually the actual memos that initially define the relationship between individual passion and how the community reinforced that, pa that passion. While on the first example memo, we can see that um, the author want to differentiate the various concepts between practice and work and how it was applied in the actual setting. Another example is between the concept of job and vocation based on the statement also of the participants. So memoing is one of the important practice in doing grounded theory. It's because at this point, the formulation of concepts and the relationship between concepts or categories and will we'll be explained and how it develops from a very simple concept to con a concepts with relations. Um, the last important coding that you need to do after the substantive coding is the theoretical coding. So in, the, in theoretical coding, we, the conceptual elaboration concludes with the, when the relationship among, in the, uh, among concepts emerged through the identification and use of appropriate theoretical codes to achieve an integrated theoretical framework for the overall grounded theory. When we are doing the substantive theory, we are initially defining the relationship between concepts or categories. At the theoretical level, we are now integrating those various um, categories that emerge from data. That means our target here is to present also the theory or the entire relationship of various categories that we've derived from data. This would be the final uh, coding part. Um, if you've seen in the definition, there is what we call a theoretical codes. The theoretical codes are sometimes used as a guide for us to determine the various relationship of major categories. And one concept that will help us, uh, the one process that will help us is the theoretical integration and hand sorting of memos. Initially, we have discussed memos as um, uh, that will record our conceptualization of categories as well as uh, on the second part are the relationship of various categories. But here we will now sort. Um, this, is, this will be the time where you will see the, the progression of your memos from simple concept that emerge from data to various relationship. So when you do the theoretical coding, you will review some of the memos. Uh, th this will somehow remind you of the previous relationship that you have established in various categories. But sometimes you might not need to sort memos because you can still remember some of the relationship but that you have defined. But uh, at least mem before you will finalize the various connection of categories, you need to review also of the memos that will, this will be the, uh, this will help you, re uh, help you establish some forgotten relationship, especially if you have initially code or forgot to focus on some of the categories. So the theoretical integration involves um, sorting of memos. This will force the researcher to theoretically discriminate as to where each memo ideas fits in an emerging theory. But sometimes in my experience, I will always uh, find the relationship between categories based on your um, what, based on what you can remember on your previous assumption or your, we can say, hypothesis of the previous relationship of categories. But um, this will be supported by memos. In my case, memos are supporting statements that the relationship between categories that I've established when I integrate it into theoretical coding uh, so the theory is presented as a conceptually abstract narrative that articulates each significant concept and then through the articulation of theoretical propositions, the relationship between this concept. So your end of theoretical coding are, can, be class, can be transformed into propositions instead of uh, 
because normally we will define hypothesis before the start of the research, the result of your grounded theory would be in a form of propositions. That means you can you might be able to refine the propositions to derive a hypothesis. What is important here is that your propositions are actually uh, derived from data, and this will be um, confirmed later by further research or during also your validation. In our case, after theoretical coding, we will do the validation of the codes by presenting it to the participants. And we will have a separate discussion on the validation and various characteristics of the substantive theory that you have derived. After theoretical coding, we cannot say that this is already the grounded theory, but somehow this will describe the substantive theory that you have, uh, that you have found in your data. Okay, that's it. For reference, we can use the, this website. This is available in the web because this is an open, uh, this is a, an open source from a journal, uh, which is also part of the qualitative research group of the original author. Okay, so for, for questions and, and further, uh, or for further readings, you can always email me or uh, post it in our forum. Have a good day.